look at the view from my balcony isn't it stunning so i live in new york city and this video is so exciting i am literally going to talk to you about the frontal lobe of the brain now if you're a coach and you want to get your athletes to perform better, think faster, live longer, which is what we should all be striving for. If you are a health coach, if you're a practitioner, whatever you are, this is what you should be striving for, especially in 2023 and 2024. Now, in order to do that, you have to have a sound understanding of the human brain, not to mention six other aspects of human performance. So let's get into this short YouTube clip. So let's think about it, right? Let's, let's think about why would I want to train my brain? Well, several reasons. A, if you're a high performer, meaning if you're working uh, on Wall Street, I say that because I, you know, a lot of my clients are on Wall Street. I work with portfolio managers, hedge funds, CEOs. So I call them high performers, right? Because a lot is on the line for them. But high performers could mean anybody in any, in any situation, athletes as well. If you are a high performer and you want to be uh, more efficient, if you want to have more energy, if you want to be able to focus better, decide better, make more intelligent decisions, have long lasting energy throughout the day, be able to react faster, be able to process information faster, then I dare say you would probably want to train your brain. So around 10 years ago, so I, I'm a neurophysiologist and human performance coach. And as a neurophysiologist, we get trained to look at EEG scans. And an EEG is an electroencephalogram. And basically, we would look at these scans to pick up on uh, epilepsy. Someone has a seizure, you can you know pick up on, on where the seizure occurred. So pretty much they are picking up on brainwave activity so how well the brain is functioning and I remember I was seeing thousands of these scans and you know I can read raw EEG data and we'd pick up on you know for example oh we'd find frontal lobe dysfunction or parietal lobe dysfunction for example and I used to think to myself ah oh, well if this is an unhealthy brain what would happen if we took a normal brain a normal functioning brain and we scanned the person and we picked up on you know minor areas of dysfunction could we correct those and it turns out that we could so around 10 years ago I started going out and just training the brains of N NBA players I was doing NFL players NBA players just mainly athletes because they're the ones that were like Louisa I want to be able to react faster I want to be able to perform better and I was the only one doing it this was 10 years ago people laughed at me that's why I moved to America because I started in Australia with soccer players and they were like, well, you're doing what? Training my brain? So I was like, I got to move to America where maybe there's a larger population and, you know, they're 10 years in front of the Australian market. So I moved to America and I just started, you know, doing cognitive work. And then I started to really research and have a look at cognition and have a look at, you know, how can we actually change the brain structurally and functionally? And I have to tell you that give me three months this was back then give me three months with an athlete and I will get them an extra 13 points in a season so that's pretty much how I started and you know it's been a, a phenomenal process ever since then but I, I can definitely say that you know now with neuroathletics which is my company we now have a six-step system which we teach other coaches how to train anyone really in the realm of human performance because what I'm finding in the market is right people go to their strength coach or their fitness coach and that coach or that personal trainer just understands how to make you fitter or how to make you stronger that's all they know in terms of like a, well we know the sets and reps and we know how to really work out your body at the gym but that's as far as they go and that upsets me okay and this upset came from 2019 so in 2019 my dad had a stroke it was a right parietal lobe infarct which was a I'll go through the the brain lobes but um, we have the frontal lobe which sits at the front of the brain then we have the parietal lobe and 
so he lost um, right side of the brain affects the left side of the body. So he lost some function in the lower limbs of his left side. So I flew back to Australia, took him to a gym to do some rehab. He's fine. By the way, he's just, you know, lost a bit of function in his body and he's changed a bit. Um, but when we went to the when we went to the personal trainer who was apparently a post stroke specialist, he had no idea about the brain. And I was like, what? And then I saw what he was doing with my dad. And I just thought, this is not improving functionally, my dad. It's not improving him. You know, he's not doing any type of hypertrophy training. His endurance is not working. They're not doing gait. Then I just couldn't understand it. So I actually got kicked out of the gym. But I was so I was wor- I was like talking to this guy and I was thinking, wow, you're a, he was a master's exercise physiologist specializing in in stroke patients but he didn't have a sound understanding of human performance so that was in 2019 that's when I thought okay I'm gonna hold a seminar so I came back to America I held a seminar which was a two-day workshop and I had I had about 15 trainers from New York City come and sit in this seminar and basically I taught them human performance and by the way the reason why I did that is because in early 2019 I had so many trainers reach out to me and say hey Louisa what are you doing you've got so many NBA players that are putting you out there on Instagram and they're vouching for you how can we learn what you do so I held this seminar which was the neuro athletics coaching certificate the NAC course and we have now certified over 500 people. And literally, I just take people through these six steps of human performance that I know and that we know in our practice, which is neuroathletics, to be true. Anyone can do this. You can get your athlete. And by athlete, I'm talking anybody that you're working with. You can get your client from average to elite. But you can't get them there if you're not understanding human performance. So... One of the very first things that we talk about at on the Neuro Athletics Coaching Certificate is neuroanatomy. That is stage one. I always look at things from a systems approach. If we are trying to build out more intelligent trainers, okay, that's what we want to do. We just want more intelligent trainers. That's what the Neuro Athletics Coaching Certificate is. There are so many trainers out there that just don't know what they're doing it's mind-boggling that they're charging for somebody's health if you are seeing someone who doesn't understand the brain which literally governs everything that we do I, I, I mean you're probably just wasting your money because the even the front okay let's have a look at this because I'm, I'm starting to get mad and I won't get mad the frontal lobe the most primitive part and largest part of the brain We hear something on Instagram, right, or on social media, on YouTube, prefrontal cortex, the PFC. So many people know that. So many people know the CEO of the brain is a prefrontal cortex. While the prefrontal cortex does live and reside in the frontal lobe, I have to tell you, the frontal lobe is so much more than that. Oh, my God, it's unbelievable. And if you understood this, you will realize how powerful you can be if you trained this area of your brain. I'm not going to go into it in this workshop or in this uh, YouTube. I just am putting this out there because I'm starting to educate people on my YouTube channel. So please, if you haven't, click subscribe. I'm new to this, but I'm just going to be, you know, educating people on various aspects of human performance. But back to the frontal lobe. Isn't it beautiful? So the frontal lobe is, sits at the front of the brain and it is separated by something something called the central sulcus. Okay, the central sulcus separates the frontal lobe from the parietal lobe. So when I told you that my dad had a a, a right parietal lobe in fact, that was in this area of the brain on the right side. So the 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 frontal lobe houses specific functions. Okay, difference between structure and functions, but functions. Are the functions that live in the frontal lobe are the pre the primary motor cortex, which basically sits just here. We've got the primary motor cortex, we've got the motor association cortex, we've got the frontal eye fields, pretty much like conjugate gaze, rapid eye movements, you know, that's 
pretty much a function of the frontal lobe. We've got Broca's area, which sits on the dominant side, and Broca's area is responsible for language. Then we've got the prefrontal cortex. And, and to be honest, the prefrontal cortex is the largest area of the frontal lobe. Why am I putting this up there if I'm not going to go and delve deep into this? Because pretty much if you understand these, okay, these functions, these five functions of the frontal lobe, we can actually map them out in a person. We can, and this is what we do at Neuroathletics. This is also what we teach. We, if I took this area, right, if I assessed it, just like you assess a bench press, just like you want to look at one repetition max of someone. If I assess their primary motor cortex, I assess their motor association cortex. By the way, the primary motor cortex, for those of you who don't know, is the area of the brain that is responsible for voluntary movement. So basically, this is the area that tells your brain, if you want to move your, uh, your foot or your arm, like throw a ball, this is where it comes from in, in a top-down mechanism. So we won't go there, but this is where it comes from. If I want to see somebody's frontal eye field and look at conjugate gaze, if I want to assess their broker's area, if I want to assess their prefrontal cortex, which consists of um, functions such as information processing speed, focus, attention, I can. And guess what I can do then? I can benchmark them and then I can go through and I can train them. And then this, oh my God, do you know what this does? This gets a better functioning frontal lobe better functioning frontal lobe I got to tell you I can get 15 more points in a season for a player I don't care what they do currently I work only my my biggest area right now is tennis players and major league baseball players that's just who I have and then the rest are the CEOs the portfolio managers and I have to tell you if I can get 15 more points in a season for my athletes or if I can get my portfolio managers to make better decisions, to become more emotionally aware, to better react to situations, or even so, guess what else lives in the prefrontal cortex? Impulse control. Do you love how I just silenced that for a sec just to build up the suspense? Impulse control. And that's big. That's big in the executive space. If we can train impulse control, which we can, they will be better executives. So the premise of this um, YouTube clip was just to introduce the area of neuroanatomy. This is like one of 50 different points that we go through when we talk about the brain. But if you are a coach, I don't care whether you're a an executive coach, whether you're a physical therapist, a chiropractor, and you really want to level up and understand human performance, become a more intelligent coach, I have a link below. You can schedule a call with our team to see how the Neuroathletics Coaching Certificate is suited for you. We do them in six-week blocks because it's a six-week program. So we have one coming up November 13th, 2023. And just check it out. Check out the website. Check out the testimonials. We are literally building out the most intelligent trainers in the world. Other than that, I'll see you in the next episode.